Muncher. In a world filled with war, hate, suffering, and Justin Bieber, two guys fix it all with a battle about a movie. One film, two opinions, one coin, two sides. They feud. You decide. It's time for Film Feud. Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Feud, the podcast where we debate whether top rated movies should be top rated. I'm Vidur. And I'm Vikram. What's up Vikram? Not much dude. You ready to feud today? Yes, yes, yes. Are you excited about the movie we're feuding today? Yes, yes, yes. Before we get into that, why don't you tell the good folk, our listeners, what we're doing here? We take a movie from the IMDb Top 250. We toss a coin, heads argues for, and tails argues against. Simple. Simple indeed. And the movie we're feuding today is uh, a big one. A big one? It's an important movie. A, a life-changing movie for some. Particularly our age group. Was it for you? I mean, we're the right target age group for this, right? Why don't we reveal it first? Okay. It's Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Obviously, because that's the only one that's on the IMDb Top 250 list. The eighth movie of the seven Harry Potter books. Wow, that's great math right there. Like a math bomb. Thanks. Well, I remember us being Harry Potter fans growing up in school. Uh, Of the books. Of the books, yeah. No comment in the movies yet. The coin toss hasn't happened yet. Of course, of course. But uh, definitely... Big fans of the books, we would try to cop them as soon as they would come out, read them as soon as possible, and try to spoil them for each other. I remember having viral fever, 104 fever, when the seventh book came out, and it was bittersweet because I had nothing to do except sit at home and read the book. That's actually a pretty uh, pretty sorted sort of homestay. I know, right? Yeah, there's nothing bittersweet about that. It's all sweet. Now, speaking of the seventh book, this is the second part of the movie based on the seventh book. And, uh, you know, since we aren't going to be feuding this one anytime soon, at least, because I don't see it entering the IMDb Top 250, I want to say up front, I actually love the seventh movie. So, part one of Deathly Hallows? That's right. Um, I I didn't that much, honestly, um, because I felt like all of the action was sort of packed into the second part. Well, you're a pleb and you need action, whereas I like the slow burn of them just going around this magical universe, like hunting for horcruxes. Camping. Yeah, and it was very much like Infinity War Part 1 because it ends with Dobby dying, you know, ends on a low. Infinity War, you mean. Oh, sorry, Infinity War. And, uh, you know, I really enjoyed that. Also, they added this one scene where Harry and Hermione dance. And I loved the book to movie change for once where they actually added a scene. I completely forgot that that wasn't in the books. Pleb. Yeah. Why don't we just get to the coin toss, Vizur? Um Okay, great. Because then I can actually talk about this movie as opposed to the seventh movie, yeah, which exactly, I love. Exactly. Sure, let's do it. So I'll be tossing the coin again. Heads argues for, tails argues against. Here we go. And I got heads. Congrats. You're dead. <laughs> You're dead. Please. Please, 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 please. The best Harry Potter movie and you're against it. <laughs> And if you if you base your argument on how the first part just, of this movie is pause, much better... Just pause, just pause. I, I'll summarize what's going on right here, okay? Your acting right now is worse than Daniel Radcliffe's. Daniel Radcliffe's a horrible actor. Let me just yes, get that out there. Yes. Cross Harry Potter movies. Why? You were jumping beyond, in the few. Beyond the Harry Potter universe, he's just overall a horrible and actor. And you acting and pretending to be excited to be for this movie, you're wait, acting worse. Wait, wait, wait. You're actually saying that you're happy you're against this movie? Of course, this movie sucks. The what seventh are you movie. About? The seventh movie is the only Deathly Hallows movie that's good. This movie is okay. awful. Why don't we save it for the feud? Because I can't wait to shit on the seventh movie. Because I feel like you're just going to be bringing that up more. No, than... that's it. We're done talking about the seventh movie. Are you I sure? promise, don't you dare shit on the seventh movie. I love that movie. I'm gonna shit on the seventh movie. I'm sorry, that's gonna happen. But are you you promising we're not going to talk about the seventh movie anymore? Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's no reason to mock. It's this is the form of flattery. What? Imitation that's... is the form of flattery. I'm done, dude. Can we just go watch the movie and get to this feud? Okay, let's do it. I'm dreading watching this movie, but let's go. Okay, let's go watch the movie. So, Vikram, let's just set some uh, standards here. Okay. Standards. Yeah. That's... I don't know. Uh, let's uh, let's just have a discussion about what just happened. Both of us just watched the eighth part, Harry Potter 8, 
without watching any of the other movies in recent times correct uh i have a confession i saw all the harry potter movies with my girlfriend over the past one year so they're pretty fresh in my mind oh wow i watched this movie cold turkey which made it suck even more but that's fine i watched all the harry potter movies within the past two years okay so theek hai fair enough and i i don't i don't i don't think that we're going to be missing out or forgetting the plot lines of the earlier movies no we're not so that's the standards i want to set i okay. want to take this both ways i want to talk about this in terms of the book to film because we're both harry potter nerds and i also want to talk about this as standalone film that's not setting standards by the way i misused the word standards the point completely. is completely you're just like we're free willing this there's no standards i'm just going to say whatever comes to mind that's essentially what you meant right now no i also want to say that we're going to have a freely nerdy feud fair as opposed to as opposed to like uh, being a non harry potter mega fan friendly feud fair i mean is there we can't even do the latter can we because we harry potter fans right yeah okay so now let us begin this is equivalent to the eighth season of game of thrones <laughs> oh Worst shot fire dude shot ending fire. ever what is it about eight like pieces of content that people can't get right <laughs> i can't think of any other um eighth season of game of thrones just is an anomaly which clearly not this actually explains the eighth season of game of thrones turns out you take a fantasy series to eight seasons there's not much you can do after that holds no logic obviously because it's technically seven pieces broken into two yeah ending it was too hard and jk rowling she'd already done it do you like the seventh book I love mostly all the books. I like the seventh book a lot. I think it's yeah. probably top three easy, top two maybe. Oh, top two? No, for sure not. Top three? I'll have to think hard. I'll just put it out there. Prisoner of Azkaban is still my favorite book. Yeah, mine too. Probably this is second. Because it was an adult and we were adults. We were 17 when this came out. It was perfect. We grew up with Harry Potter. We grew up with these versions of the Harry Potter characters. Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint and uh, Emma Watson. You know what started ruining the movies for me? No, wait, let me finish. Okay. Boyhood did it better. Growing up with characters? No, that did, did. Not, that did not land. No, your did. joke didn't land. These guys didn't grow up right. Boyhood Except, is not even a comparison. Your joke didn't land either. Except Emma Watson. Okay. These uh, these folks so did you're, not you're grow up right. So you're the hottie for Emma Watson? Then of let's course. Let's just put that out of the way. Okay. okay, wait. Daniel Radcliffe remained too short. Rupert Green became <laughs> too British. Neville Longbottom just like... I don't know. I mean, went whack. Oh, wait, hold up. You just said Daniel Radcliffe remained too short. He did. That's it's your problem. It's not right for Harry Potter. No, okay. he's good apart from I'll that. I'll tell you what started, uh, what started tainting this whole Harry Potter universe for me um, is when the movies started coming out one after the other. I disliked Daniel Radcliffe from the get-go. From like step one uh-huh. of seeing his face. What's aha about that? Yeah, he sucks in this movie. I didn't cast him. It's not my fault. There's no aha here. But you have to defend the movie that you watched yeah. in which he's the lead character. I would very gladly do that. But just to put it out there, I the the movies just started... You know, I had this picture of Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter in my mind. So like book five, six, seven, whenever I would read Harry Potter, I would have a picture of Daniel Radcliffe in my mind. So that actually started tainting the books a little bit that for me. That sucks. That's I'm horrible. Sorry. That's horrible. I still love the books, obviously. Uh, but I would say, just this is all uh, a response to your top two or top three, by the way. That's how far back I am No, still. this is all a concession. You might call it anything else. Concession for what? For the lead character and casting. This is not a concession for Deathly Hallows Part 2 then. This is a lead concession for the Harry Potter film universe. Why don't we talk about the Deathly Hallows Part 2? Yeah, please, let's do it. Okay, I'll go broad points first and then sure. why don't we go chronologically? Because since we can have a nerdy feud, we can actually break stuff down, okay? Okay. Broadly, mm-hmm. two major things that stuck out to me. One, the color grading sucked. I mean, I get it, it's a dark movie, but everything looked awful. Didn't you notice that in the first part, especially before the battle starts? I actually think not, dude. I think visually, these guys did a really good job. David Yates, the director, he ended up directing the last four books, essentially. And uh, I think... They, he did a really good job in terms of translating what the Harry Potter universe or the wizarding world would look like on cinema. I think this movie came closest to being true to what they were trying to achieve with the books. So I actually think the complete opposite. I think visually this movie was very, very striking, very well done. Firstly, Chris Columbus did that with his first two movies. He set the tone. <laughs> that was me barfing. Did you get that? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. I thought you had a let me, let me spazzed just, out. Let me just clean the mic. Sorry, sorry. Chris Columbus did a horrible job. Everything he, up until Goblet of Fire was really, really bad. How Goblet dare you? Prisoner of Azkaban with Alfonso Cuaron was great. And by the way, speaking Ugh. of Alfonso Cuaron, Gravity came out two years after this movie, Deathly Hallows 2. Okay. And the special effects on that movie were insane. The green screen in this movie is so bad. 
so bad there are literally times you can tell that these guys are standing in front of a green screen and like a mountain or a quidditch pitch or a burning castle is behind them that's insane they should have asked koron yo bro you helped us out on harry potter 3 can you help us out with the effects on this one wait so you think the green screen and prisoner of azkaban was better no i'm saying for a 2011 2012 movie the green screen in this movie is horrible <sighs> horrible i think it's pretty and good and if you want to make a bath sound make it now for the green screen no i think it was pretty good i think it wasn't as bad i think i'm just comparing it to the rest of the harry potter movies and this was head over heels much better than anything i would that's not fair the last movie should have better green screen than all the movies that preceded of course well yeah it, it did yeah. oh according to the director's great the color grading is great green screen is also great i can already say where this feud's going oh this movie is dark so let's make everything dark so lame man as in like visually you mean yeah. dark I oh dark look everything so. is muted it looks like i'm wearing 3d glasses even though i'm not So you liked everything that happened in one, but you didn't like it in two, or you uh, didn't what, like this part this? in one as well. A, a law courtroom, a high school debate. I'm just saying. You, I, I pointed out one as the movie that set the tone for the Harry Potter universe. I can't give that credit to David Yates. It had already been set, and the transition in tone credit goes to Koran for Prisoner of Azkaban. I'm sorry, by one I didn't mean one. I meant Deathly Hallows Part One. You said that's your favorite Harry oh, Potter movie. Oh, Deathly Hallows Part One is my favorite Harry Potter movie amongst all of them. But right. actually, the the visual is way more deserved because they're actually out in the forest the whole time, or it's actually a much much darker tone. This is like an actiony tone by the end of it. What they're the same movie, they're the same book, they're the same story. Yeah, but it doesn't work when you're in the castle and you're having that color grading, as opposed to when you're like outside in the in the mountains and the lake. Like the 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 dragon looks like it's pure skin because of the color grading. It doesn't even look. It just looks like a the special dragon effect. in the vault. Yeah, the dragon in the vault was pretty well done. It looked like it was like a like a tortured dragon. I think they did a good job with that. Okay, you know what? Let's just get into it part by part. Okay, first act. I'll start with the concession, okay? Helena Bonham Carter's acting mm-hmm. of her playing Emma Watson, or rather, I should say Hermione, playing Bellatrix, played right. by her. I'll grant you that. I think that was one extra step you added there. <laughs> Whatever, it's confusing. So basically, Hermione with Polyjuice potion pretending to be Bellatrix. Yeah, but played by Helena Bonham Carter, playing what okay, Emma stop, Watson stop. would be. We get it. We get it. We get it. Jesus, we get it. You don't want my concession or what? Okay, bring it. That's my concession, but what they do with it is awful. Apparently, in a visiting world, you can go to the bank and uh, demand that they show you to the vault, even though polyjuice potion exists, even though magic exists. Mm-hmm. What are these rules that they're just it's completely? Not, it's not rules. It's it's Bellatrix Lestrange's power over these people. That's what Hermione tried to tap into. But polyjuice potion exists in yeah. this universe. Exactly. That's. I don't care who if Voldemort walks in. Maybe if Voldemort walks really, in. Really, really. <laughs> I don't care who walks in. If you want to go to your vault, you can't just be like, look at my face and do it. No. So Voldemort obviously not going to walk in. And the closest these guys get to Voldemort in terms of power and fright is is Bellatrix Lestrange. So that's the whole conundrum there. That these guys are these guys are real. Well, uh, weirded out because she's not acting like herself, but they're so scared shitless still. No, 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 no. That's not my point. My point is that their plan, mm-hmm. Hermione's plan, right. smartest girl in the Wizarding World. Right. Her plan is to say, "Take me to my vault without ID or without my wand." Right. The goblins don't actually listen to her. What happens is Harry willy nilly mm-hmm. decides to use an unforgivable curse, right. the Imperial curse, which you get sent to Azkaban for, if you remember. Right. What is happening? What happened to the unforgivable curses? Why is the goblin smelling shit when he gets hit by the Imperial curse? The goblin Bogrod, by the way, who meets a horrible end, burnt by the dragon, and these kids, these kids have become monsters. They have no <laughs> feelings whatsoever when the goblin gets burnt by the dragon because they Imperial cursed him. Yeah, dude, Barty Crouch Junior didn't do something so horrible <laughs> to Mad Eye Moody in the fourth book. Look, man, dire straits, dude. Like they had to do things to make ends meet. They're on the run. They they need all these Horcruxes. It's beyond the Ministry of Magic and punishments and crimes and all of that. So, people are dead. Loved ones are dead. They need to like make sure their Horcruxes are. uh destroyed and yeah fine i you got to give them that slack no in the seventh book by the way they did use the unforgivable curse in the seventh book i don't remember what the reaction was but when you see it visually it's so stupid like it's the filmmaker's job to make it look less stupid and more believable when you're seeing it visually also my problem with it is all the rules that they set up they keep breaking and jk rowling is kind of responsible for this as well cuz she would like invent time turners and stuff in every book 
But here, like, for instance, unforgivable curse, okay, no repercussion. Then they just randomly keep forgetting when they can apparate and when they can't. Right? Like, they're on the dragon. And they're like, oh, my God, everybody jump. And Like, what? They're wizards. Why do they jump to the water and get wet? Before that, they got dropped from the goblin cart. And then she just uses, like, a, oh, a reducto, follow, speedo. And then, like, they all, <laughs> they all land safely. But here, oh, my God, tension building. They have to jump off the dragon into the water. Do they just keep forgetting things? They forget that they have magic? And you know what? I'll give you a nitty-gritty. The goblin makeup. I don't makeup. want a nitty-gritty, bro. The goblin makeup is What weak. goblin makeup? It's actually worse than Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. What? The makeup of the goblins. Is worse than Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. It looks awful. When was the last time you saw Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone? It looks Stone? like I'm watching a Ramlila. No, it does not. It actually looks pretty good. That scene when they have grip hook in that room and they're trying to figure out how to get into that vault and then that exchange about the sword of Gryffindor, that makeup looks unreal. It looks so good. Firstly, grip hook is played by Warwick Davis, the legendary little person, if that's what we're supposed to call okay. him. <laughs> the legendary English actor who's been in every Star Wars it's and great. Everybody. And then throw some great makeup on him and he makes a darn good goblin. He dude. literally looked better as an Ewok in the 1983 Return of the Jedi. Makeup wise, he did not. Then he does in this movie. What? That's a, that's a blasphemous comparison. Because it's just not right. It's not even on the same plane. Just because he did another role with makeup on doesn't mean that that role is better than this role. He actually looked realistic. The makeup was so good that you could see his expressions change when he was figuring stuff out on the fly when he was talking to these kids. It looked the level of a high school play, man. I don't know why you're defending it. But I'm happy to move on because there's so much shit to cover. Okay, gladly. Okay? Let's do it. What happens next? Firstly, Harry says, you know who, which just pissed me off. But I will move past that nitty gritty. He does say it a couple of times in the books. I know he does. But in this case, he's like, we have to defeat you know who when he gets into Hogwarts. Which is like the worst time to say it when you're trying to rile up, you know, Dumbledore's army or the highest. No, because in the books also, it's it's noted that he he doesn't say it, especially to a crowd, because he knows that it's going to affect them negatively. Bad timing, bro. Now's the time to like go full Valdi, which is what Professor McGonagall does later, you know. But anyway, before we get to that, how what he gets to... What are talking about here? Dude? We're talking about... The guy says, you know who, oh my god, this movie sucks. We're still on the nitty gritties. The nitty gritties add up. What no, can I do? Let's, can we move on from the nitty gritties to something more concrete? Snape. Please. Okay, Alan Rickman, R.I.P. R.I.P. I miss that guy. Amazing character. Amazing actor. Firstly, he went look-wise full kiss the band. Oh, you I yeah, I was about to say something a little more muted, like, but I, I see the vibe that you're going for. It's aggressive in this movie. I loved it, dude. It was pretty aggressive. I loved it. I think everything, the way they showed the Snape reveal finally come to place and then the flashbacks and... No, 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 wait, wait, wait. We'll get to the reveal. But first, he challenges Harry in the Great Hall. Now, this is a sequence completely changed for the purpose of the movie. And what really happens is McGonagall gets a chance to shine, you know, when she comes to Harry's defense. But now that he's about to be revealed as a good guy post the Half-Blood Prince. What is going on? Like, what is he doing? Why is he attacking Harry? Why he doesn't defend himself against McGonagall? He just kind of runs away. That makes some sense. What is going on? Like He also, he, he also takes out his two minions very slyly, if you notice. Oh, does he? He deflects one of uh, McGonagall's spells and it makes he makes it hit those guys. Okay, I'll yeah. grant you that. And cool. then he turns into a bat. What do you mean a bat? That's how they've shown Death Eaters all movies. No, he's not He's not doing the Death Eater thing. He he becomes like a like an anim... What do they call him? An animagus from the third book? No, he does not. That That's exactly how they show Death Eaters in all he, the movies. What it you, looks like he turns into a bat, bro. It have you like, not seen any of the other movies? Have you not seen Death Eaters from the other movies? That's, you know, exactly, that's exactly what they are. I'll tell you what you can't just single out uh, uh, Snape and be like, he turns into a bat? No, dude. Death Eaters are more like wispy smokes, like standard, like straight going, like... It looks like a person's going. Here it looks like he suddenly is starring in an episode of The Adams Family. And he's also dressed like Morticia Adams, by the way, if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, he just turns into a bat. And then, this pisses me off. I know you're going to bitch nitty gritty. After McGonagall has a like uh, heroine moment, she turns around and lights all the fires in the Great Hall again. Right. Which I think is from the books, right? right. Like, it's very drab. Yeah. But the thing is, they can't have a darkly lit sequence in the movies. So if you look, all the fires are lit in the scene before when Snape is there. She just turns around and, like, waves her wand and they show the fires light up again. But because I had the magic of, like, rewind 10 seconds, I actually watched it. 
and it was so dumb. Oh, I, the, the the candles are lit. Yeah, everything is lit, and then she moves around. And, that, and, that's that's a slip up. That's a slip up right there. I uh, mean, I love Professor McGonagall in the movie. By the way, Maggie Smith is like I forget the name of her ladiness from Downton Abbey, right? But she's a beast, basically. She's a beast, and uh, Alan Rickman had a lot of. Uh, issues with this scene because he actually look, looked up to Dame Maggie Smith a lot she was one of his heroes so what he didn't want to wave a wand at and, her and that and also he was trying to figure out how to make a wand moving menacing in like the Snape fashion <laughs> <laughs> so these two things combined he actually ended up having a tough time in that scene uh, the the candles being lit that's a goof up obviously the 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 bat comparison to a death eater I, I can't get over this because I know beyond this feud once I talk to you off mic you'll be like yeah that was a stupid one no it wasn't all like that don't you remember the order of the phoenix when they're getting attacked in the in the ministry it, that's exactly how they all look he he it's too bat like that's all I'm but saying. that's exactly how death eaters look all across Harry so either you don't like you think they look like death like bats all across Harry Potter movies okay. or just this specific let's instance. move on to more real issues from this yeah, exact right. when, when we get to the when we get to the meat of it you want to move on you just throw your nitty gritty <laughs> out there and then you want to move on uh, let's get to the meat of it okay this, this is really been pissing me off man at least, <laughs> dude, I must say dude uh, you really wait, getting to me wait this is a problem with the books also so I'll mm. grant you that but that doesn't mean the movie can't fix it which is McGonagall expels all of Slytherin to the dungeons yeah that's awful that's a that's a safety hazard yeah but that's awful I hated that when it happened in the books also yeah Especially because afterwards and then Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, mm-hmm. the whole implication is like Slytherin is pretty good. Like that's where Harry Potter's son ends up. Like what? She says send them to the dungeons? Yeah. What happened to freedom of speech, bro? Yeah. Also, yeah, like she's openly giving reference to three other houses. That wasn't cool. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Since you're conceding. I'm not conceding. Just say you th- concede. No, I'm not. It's not a movie thing. It's a book thing. Fix it in the movie. Why fix it? What do you mean? It's it, They didn't see it as, as a fix. They, they didn't, didn't see take, it as a problem. They didn't take 50% of things from the books, right? Like, don't take this as well. Wait, I disagree on the 50% number very strongly. I it's think, close. It's close. 30% I, at least. I think it's max 20. Shut up. Please. I think it's max 20. I, I can give you a list. I went through and read the fandom okay, give wiki me a list. of all the things. Okay. I mean, like, big storylines, house elves. Dumbledore's sister. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff they didn't even cover in previous movies, so they didn't feel the need to close Obviously, it out. Obviously, stuff will get... Uh, lost out because of movies but I don't think it's 50-50 nowhere close let me give you the concession though which I think is also in the book but I might be mistaken okay. with McGonagall Maggie Smith mm-hmm. when Filch walks in yeah you remember like before she tells him to take them to Slytherin right, right. and he's like uh, students out of the dorm yeah. students out of the dorm yeah. and then she's like they're supposed to be you blithering idiot yeah. <laughs> just the way she says that which I can't really do loved it Maggie oh, Smith okay yeah I'll take it I love how you have nitty gritty. Uh, uh, I'm a fair as well. and balanced Fox yeah. News yeah. kind of feuder, you yeah. know. You just summed it up perfectly right there. Yeah, yeah. And then, pretty nice of Valdi. Oh, first mention of Valdi this episode. Let's Baldi. call him Valdi. Pretty nice of Valdi to announce his arrival, just broadcast it into people's oh, ears. Uh, I think that was done pretty well. He has the frequency spell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, like, it's, it's the one where they stick the wand to their throat? No, that's sonorous. That, that, he just becomes loud. This is like. Uh, uh, radio Patronum, you know, it's just <laughs> broadcast straight into people. Dude, I think Ralph Fiennes is a beast. Ralph Fiennes is a beast. He's a beast, you know dude. The crazy thing, I watched In Bruges like mm-hmm. two days ago, which yeah. is one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Do you remember Ray Fiennes' name in In Bruges? Uh, Harry? Harry Waters. <laughs> Oh, is it Waters? Yeah, so close. <laughs> I, I, I don't remember his last name, but I But because him. I'd seen In Bruges, mm-hmm. I knew what Ray Fiennes was capable of. Okay, I know where this is heading. It's bullshit. I already call it. Okay, you know what? We'll get to Waldy like acting when Waldy needs to act in this movie. For now, it's just his voice. And then he warns people and whatever. And then Harry goes hunting for the Horcrux, right? Yep. The whole Grey Lady sequence the, very much changed from the books. The Ravenclaw? Yeah, with the, the Grey Lady slash Helena Ravenclaw, I guess her name is. And uh, do you remember the random jump scare that just happens in it? Yeah. What's that about? Well, they just trying to set that ominous mood. I actually got scared. Brilliant. What do you mean brilliant? What kind of movie is this? Why would you add a random jump scare? Well, to, they, they, then they did that scene justice, right? Because Harry's in this place, he doesn't understand what's going. Suddenly, a ghost comes, goes through him. Yeah, this is not a this is not paranormal activity where a ghost justifies a jump scare. This is a Harry Potter ghosts are a normal thing. They can't just randomly jump scare you and you have. Know, you know, you're making a point for me. I'm not. You kind of are. I, either you. Keep Deci- making it because I love it, or I won't even say a word, or you just stop right there. Decide the tone of the movie is they, my point. You, you're saying they can't have one jump scare scene, one scene 
which is supposed to be a scary scene they can't have a jump scare in that jump scares are weak in horror movies so to randomly use a jump scare in harry potter is exactly. really lame and it would be one thing if they used it in other movies like prisoner of azkaban for instance kind of a scary vibe or maybe even philosopher's stone when harry is a fish out of water in this universe so random jump scare just confused me about the movie but i'll continue i can see you have nothing to add I have I many things to add. Don't need to. You're making a point for me. I'm, I'll happily let you talk in this one. Please go on. Because I'm going in order. Ron and Hermione go to the Chamber of Secrets. Forget the part. I mean, Ron opens it with parcel tongue. Ugh. Whatever. He, you can speak parcel tongue, I guess. And then, like, they destroy the thing. And then they kiss. Do you remember that? They kiss. Oh yeah. This is the kiss in the movie. This is the epic Ron and Hermione after eight movies getting together. Horrible. And so, speaking of kissing and snogging during battles. Snogging now. Okay. Harry and Ginny. Uh huh. Why don't you give me your thoughts, Vikram? Please give me your honest thoughts here about Harry and Ginny as a couple in the about movie. Ha- oh, the, so Daniel Radcliffe and the actor who played Ginny as a couple in the movie. I'm not going to get personal here. Okay. Yeah, I think it was fine. I think it worked well. Especially- They had the chemistry of two noble gases. <laughs> for for the people who are not as chemistry literate as we are, could you please explain that? They had the chemistry. What does of- that mean? <laughs> <laughs> that means that if you bring the two of them together and lock them in a jar like uh-huh. and open the jar a year later uh-huh. they still would not look like they should be next to each other <laughs> I, you completely fudged up what noble gases is supposed to be doing. i think a better uh, analogy for you would be like they'd have chemistry of two north poles does that make sense i don't need to explain anything go learn some chemistry they don't have any chemistry uh so for people who don't understand chemistry two north poles that's 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 a good enough analogy they have the chemistry of two north poles okay. fair they uh, repel each other okay cuz this is now fun for me who had better chemistry hermione or ron or harry and ginny in the movies oh my god that's not even a fair question who had the worst chemistry harry and ginny so then and whose chemistry mattered more ron and hermione and yet they messed it up it's just both awful okay I feel like this is such a big nitty gritty fest. We're barely talking about the movie. We're we talking... are. We're going in order. It just starts turning into a Bollywood movie, man. I can't help we it. We were talking about that one jump scare scene. Then we're talking about two kisses in the movie. We're not even talking about the movie. Why aren't we talking about Ray Fiennes? Why aren't we talking about the directing? You threw in how the dark visuals didn't uh, weren't to your liking. Let's talk about the movie a little bit. The soundtrack, the score. I think it was tremendous. I think it added so much to the movie. Battle scene, emotional scene. Ominous scene. Everything was so well done. We're not even talking about any of that. We're just talking about the stupid nitty gritties of oh he kissed her. I didn't like it. Oh he kissed her. I didn't even like it even less. Stop, dude. Just stop. I'm talking about scenes. I'm talking about moments. You can't just jump to other aspects of filmmaking and just say this is better. <laughs> We can't talk about other aspects of filmmaking. Okay, We fine. We're talking about the kissing scene. The music was okay. The best part of the music was the nostalgia built up from the previous seven movies, and I liked that one sequence of the music during the Battle of Hogwarts. I didn't like. The the scene cuz the green screen was awful but when they're actually running through the battle and it's all like dramatic cinematic music but like apart from that not that noticeable i mean when it is noticeable it's like old school harry potter music i like that sure i don't no think problem. so the, do you remember the snape scene when uh, snape finally dies the music then like a bollywood movie the music no the deaths I think that scene was so well done dude. What? Yeah, I Did think that scene was so well done. You know there was there are these particular scenes when I was reading I still remember when I was reading and you know like that's according to me that's the whole point of uh, reading a fantasy novel is trying to like visualize scenes in your head like oh this is how it's probably going down. This is the only movie in the Harry Potter universe fine the first one as well because it's the same it's 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 a ex- ex- extension of the same book these are the only movies in the whole Harry Potter universe that actually came close to what i was picturing was going on in my head that's a personal shitty opinion who cares i care that's why i love this movie yeah but did you really picture snape dying like he's a bollywood villain and then well yeah that's anti hero of course that's pretty much how it happens in the book as well it doesn't i mean yes it Okay, firstly it's very more realistic within that world in the book. He dies at the shrieking shack, which I think is amazing because if you remember, he dies looking at Harry at the shrieking shack and James Potter saved him from the shrieking shack all those years ago. Right. And then also what I thought was really weird is how the one time Voldemort doesn't adava kedavra someone is Snape. He's just like, "Oh, wait, let me get this straight." Uh I need to get control over the Elder Wand. You are Davak Kedavra uh, Dumbledore. That's how you got the Elder Wand. So how will I kill you? Nagini, kill. Oh yeah. my god. Nagini has control over the Elder Wand now, according to Voldemort. What? No, cuz what? 
<laughs> Why? Why? You can't just throw in like stupid logic. Just because Snape needs his dying moments with Harry, who by the way is hiding behind the wall, but for some reason Voldy can't sense him for once. Just because he wants that moment, uh, Voldemort first, I guess, sectum sempras him, like slices his throat, and then asks Nagini to kill him. Yeah. And Nagini doesn't even kill him completely. And she just walks away while he's dying so that they have the time to come and just like take his memories. Well, firstly, uh, Voldemort's a psycho. So he wanted to kill Snape in the most... Painful way possible. P.S. This guy, Avada Kedavra's people, like he's no, like doing Nagini Lumos. He kills so many people in the movies. It's not like he's just waving his wand Avada kedavra people. Pretty on. much. No, not Pretty really. Much. I feel like he does it thrice or four times in totality, firstly. I don't think he does it more than Across that. Across the series. Yeah. At one point, he does it to one of his Death Eaters just because he's feeling a little off from his Horcrux dying. 100% he doesn't do it more than five times in the series, firstly. Nagini ends up killing like two or three people easily. No. And I, I completely understand why he didn't want to do a Vada Kara. He wanted that guy to suffer because he understood what Snape meant. He didn't want the guy to suffer. He was a faithful servant who had to die. You can't justify Snape dying. This applies to the book too. I actually least... loved that scene. I loved the way they showed that scene. I loved how it how it uh, rolled into the whole uh, uh, flashback and actually Harry finding out what Snape did for him at that point of time. I think cinematically they did such a good job. Also, Snape's last wish is to look into Harry's eyes, right? Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Because he still loves Lily. Yep. This part is actually not explained at this point yet. Yep. I mean, obviously we knew it as book readers because yep. Harry needs to go to the, what Snape calls the Ponceve. <laughs> The pensive. Pen, pen, pensive. I thought it was a pensive, but in the book, he just goes, go to the pensive. The pensive. It's just so dying plus his accent, dude. It's right, like, right. Pensive. In the book, he says, look at me. Hmm. Okay. Which could mean anything, just like this is the man, now the boy he sacrificed his life for. In the movie, he says, look at me. You have your mother's eyes. He's just using Harry as like a sexualized prop <laughs> to stare into Lily's <laughs> eyes one last time before he dies. <laughs> Once a creep, always a creep, <laughs> snivelous Snape. Hoji. Hoji ka poji, bro. <laughs> that was disgusting, man. You shadow all over Alan Rickman right now. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm hurt. I'm no, hurt. Alan Rickman is the best. I'm hurt. Hans bro. Gruber, rest in peace, bro. But Snape. Severus Snape, man. Come on. Severus Snape, uh, 10x better than greater than Hans Gruber. Listen, I will grant you the whole sequence, the whole always uh, Snape's backstory sequence right. that Harry watches in the pensive. Except even within that, I'm conceding that sequence because it's nice and it's great to see it visualized. And you get to use footage from previous movies. And they also de-age Snape when he's talking to Dumbledore and stuff, which is nice. And great score the entire time. Great score. Okay. Except, except when uh, when Snape walks in uh, uh, right after uh, Voldemort first attempted to kill Harry, I just... It, it's weird to see this visualized. Wait, you mean when Lily dies? When Lily dies, right. when his parents die, Harry's right. parents. Then Snape walks in. He's the first to walk in. Right. And he just cradles Lily, like a dead Lily, and yeah. he cries. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of weird, bro. Like, I know he loved her and stuff. But James Potter is lying there dead. Yeah. He's cradling, like, dead Lily. Yeah. Her one-year-old son is just staring at him. I just got the heebie-jeebies, man. That's not right. Like, he was the first person on the scene. Yeah. And he's just cradling dead Lily. And, like, Harry staring. You're not human, dude. What do you mean you're not human? Dude, the, the love of his life. He doesn't care about James Potter very clearly. He doesn't care about Harry Potter as much either. Oh, the love God. of his life is dead in front of his eyes. Despite his best efforts to save her, she's dead in front of his eyes. You have the heebie-jeebies because he holds her in his arms? It's creepy. You're weird as hell, dude. It's creepy. This, can we move on? Can we move on from this point? I'm done. I don't want to sure. talk about your heebie-jeebies anymore. <laughs> okay. I think we have to move on to the uh, third-ish act, which means uh, we talk about the Battle of Hogwarts. Boss fight. Boss fight. And uh, and uh, Valdi and Ray Fiennes. So good. So, so good. Listen, Ray Fiennes throughout the series, great acting job. 15 points to Slytherin from my side. <laughs> Good job. Dude, uh, you know what I was really impressed by? And uh, I mean, uh, to their credit, this starts happening... Uh, Goblet of Fire onwards is uh, uh, their recreation of the character Voldemort. I think it's pretty spot on. Like in, when I was reading the books, in my mind, that's exactly how Voldemort looked like. No, I didn't have any opinion before, but once the movies came out, the fourth one where he actually comes back from the dead properly, hmm. after that, all I saw was Ray Fiennes as Voldemort. I mean, it's too overpowering to imagine anything else. But it's 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 not like you know a lot of times when you see like when you read uh, books and then you see their movie versions and you're kind of disappointed or. Uh, very rarely do they exceed expectations. 
to this limit i think voldemort they sort of nailed in terms of look and feel i think uh, okay i'll give credit to the look and feel in terms of whatever department that is costume production design makeup okay a little bit of cg as well okay a little bit of cg what yeah. the nose the nose and uh, yeah basically the face structure also a little bit okay fair but actually the best part of voldemort in this movie and throughout the series is J.K. Rowling's characterization. J.K. Rowling did it in her prime, man. This was like fourth, fifth, sixth book. And all the lore she'd built around him. It was awesome. And I think this movie, I'm so glad when it stays faithful to that. You know, my favorite moment, we might be jumping ahead a little bit here, is when Harry finally shows up to the Forbidden Forest. Mm -hmm. And uh, Voldemort tries to kill him for the first time in the movie. And uh, turns out he's fallen down as well when Harry goes to King's Cross. And then when he's getting up, Bellatrix tries to help him, like my Dark Lord or whatever. And he's like, no, I don't need your help. Mm -hmm. I think that's from the book, if I remember correctly. And that is pure like J.K. Rowling characterization. Mm. That's what I love. Like, Ray Fiennes bringing that to life. Yeah. Amazing. I think he did such a good job, man. Like, and the voice he uses, the the tone of delivery he uses. Let's hear it. So sinister. It's just, it's crazy, dude. Like, uh, 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 after that scene when uh, everyone thinks Harry Potter's dead and uh, Hagrid's carrying his dead body. And they're just like sauntering into into the castle and stuff, right? It's like, Harry Potter is dead. Is dead. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, it shivers right there, right? Do you remember his laugh? I'll concede the laugh as well. No, I can't do his laugh. But he I goes like, oh, Harry Potter is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then even the Ivada Kadabra, right? like Harry Potter, oh, the boy is calm, right? And this is after the scene where, he's, where he sees the ghost spirits of his, his parents and Lupin and stuff. From the resurrection like, stone. From the resurrection action stone and we're all here and then he's standing and he's just like Kedabra. it's so good dude every time Ralph Fine speaks especially like that the, the scene we were talking about where he's uh, just projecting his voice the intercom whatever spell that was that you made up I think just his voice his delivery his tone is spot on man but there what could I have love... never been a better Voldemort yeah I agree I agree I, I'll concede Voldemort but across all the books uh, Voldemort gets screwed up in the fourth act of this movie which we'll talk about in a moment but at least until this point with this like false victory that uh, Voldemort thinks he's having I had this feeling there's three things that happen okay one he says Harry Potter is dead like mm -hmm. you said second the laugh that I just did mm -hmm. and third he hugs uh, Malfoy Malfoy <laughs> yeah. and that it, wasn't in the books by the way oh that wasn't in the no, books no. yeah because they screwed up that sequence we'll talk about it but across <laughs> all three things I just felt that Voldemort, the character, is doing an impression of what humans do. He's oh, just yeah. like, oh, laugh, laugh. He's, like, <laughs> he's like trying to be endearing to normal he's people. He's like, oh, hug. You put one arm around the person's shoulder <laughs> and the other arm across the other side. It was so awkward. Props to Ralph Fiennes for all of that, man. That was hilarious, yeah. dude. It's like he read what all this stuff is in a book. Yeah. Like he's forgotten what it's like to be human and that's what he's doing. Yeah. So, okay. Now that we've reached the laughing, hugging sequence... Mm -hmm. I'll just call this the fourth act. Firstly, Harry's plan in the third act is to go sacrifice himself. He was always brave, right? But then the re the rest of the plan relies on Narcissa Malfoy lying for him. Like in the in the uh, book, mm -hmm. she goes up to him himself. Like she's desperate for him to be alive so she can ask about Malfoy. Here, th he just saw this kid get hit in square in the face with an Avada Kedavra. Mm -hmm. And then he asks, is he dead? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, of course he's dead. He just happens to not be dead. But of course but, he's dead. I mean, given their past history in terms of duels and stuff, it's a very valid question to ask if he's alive or dead. Did he go hit square in the face? Everybody saw it. Well, Voldemort did that, like, what? How many? Like, 16 <laughs> years ago as well? I mean, that's how the entire story starts. That Voldemort killed him, supposedly, but he wasn't dead. But the Voldemort boy died. who lived. Exactly. Thanks and Voldemort much. died. So, obviously, it's a very justified question. I'm surprised Voldemort didn't double or triple check if he's alive and he sent only Mr. Samalfoy <laughs> to go and check. He should have sent his best soldiers and be like, bro, what are you doing? He's dead. 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 Okay, and then should we just skip the King's Cross sequence? I mean, whatever. Uh, actually, not, man. That's, that's you know how I was talking about, uh, um, like, when I'm reading the books and I'm having trouble visualizing scenes. This purgatory scene, like, they call it, uh, they call it limbo in the Harry Potter universe. Yeah. I This was the only time in any Harry Potter book, and, and this was me at... Uh, uh, well, I was I was the oldest I'd ever been reading a Harry Potter book, seventeen or eighteen, and I could not visualize or picture the the set of the scene, the settings of the scene, like what it looked like, what it must have felt like to be there. 
and then I saw this in the movie, and I thought it was beautiful, dude. I think, I think, and I went back and read the scene again in the in the books, and then I like tried to compare it to what I see in the movie, and it was pretty much like for like. Really? I don't I think did, they did I that good it. job with the. You know what I didn't like a concession is that Voldemort fetus. That's the only part I liked. Because that's exactly the same as... Uh, described in the book. Not don't just describe in the book, but they show it... Uh, or oh, the fourth movie before, or whatever. Yeah, the fourth movie, like before the blood and all of that. So I think that was a little bit like that. But I felt like in the book, in this particular, in this particular scene, it was described a little differently. So everything else, the white setting, the hue, the floor, the environment, it's a train station, it's not a train station, it's real, it's not real. Uh, Dumbledore in the scene, I think, I think it was... It kind of touched me, man, honestly. Yeah, it just kept going for too long. It was exactly the same length as it was in the book. Yeah, but in the movie, it felt longer. I mean, the book is much longer than the movie. And also, like, it was just stretched out, you know, in terms of, oh, professor, do I go back? Oh, words are, in my sense, the most inexhaustible source of magic. Like, that's not the right timing. In the book, it's the return of Dumbledore, and it's so special. You just want him to go on and on. Here, you're like, well, what happened? Like, is he dead? Is he not? What's going to happen? What's this fetus doing there? I didn't enjoy it so much. So, whatever. Okay, cool. It visualized it for you. We can move on. By the way, did you notice we've skipped the Battle of Hogwarts, which should just tell you what the Battle of Hogwarts is in this movie? Just filler action. Whereas, in the book... I just remember flipping the page to the chapter and it said the Battle of Hogwarts and I got goosebumps. This this is like this this is the opposite of goosebumps in the movie. This is like duck uh, depressions. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Bumps? <laughs> <laughs> opposite of bumps is depressions. Okay. Um I knew you were going to say something bad about the Battle of Hogwarts. I actually loved it. I loved it. I thought it was great. It's kind of what it's like and I love the fact that they didn't stick to the source material through and through for this because otherwise it would just be a bunch of people just waving wands at each other just like everyone else was i loved how they deviated in terms of the voldemort and harry potter fight sequences the uh the visualization of the scene that morphing together coming apart all of that stuff i actually thought it was pretty kick-ass man because imagine do you remember the battle of hogwarts from the book it was just a bunch of like just worn chucking worn, worn no it wasn't all the like cool cinematic moments of the professors lining up and uh, covering the castle in a uh, protega maxima oh, no I'm, I'm i'm skipping all of that to the actual main fight all of that stuff is oh hella wait, wait, cool. wait hella cool of course like with the when they're setting up their charms and and protecting the the castle and all of that yeah that stuff was very well done i think in the books and the movies as well do you uh-huh. agree well, yeah, the part that was from the book, the part where they added the werewolf uh, chasing him on the bridge in the Neville scene just to make it cinematic against mm. shitty green screen, like, I didn't care much for that. Okay. So the part where I saw the book come to life, sure. But that's why I said it wasn't memorable. Because what most people uh, uh, seem to have a problem with is the Harry versus Voldemort boss fight. That's what most We're people... We're getting to that, by the way. We haven't reached the part that they screwed up the most. So there's two Battle of Hogwarts, right? right. One is in the beginning until uh, Harry Potter's death happens and right. then after. Can we talk about... You, you know what I'm going to say here, man. The changes they make from this point on after the Harry Potter's dead moments. What did you think of these changes? That's exactly what I was talking about. I love that they deviated from the book. Because oh, it's a weakened Voldemort fighting, uh, well, the most powerful Harry Potter's ever been. What? Yeah. How so? Because all his Horcruxes are dead. It's just Voldemort now. Yeah, okay. That's not what weakens him. That weakens his ability to stay immortal. Yeah. It doesn't mean he's actually any less a wizard. He is weakened at that point of time because all his Horcruxes just died in the span of like Maybe two like hours. slightly shaken, but like that's not part of the lore of the book at all. The ending scene between Voldemort and Harry, the whole point of the book is Voldemort dies as a mortal. Like Harry actually explains why he's about to be beat when he actually explains that Harry is the master of the Elder Wand, which is why he wins. Not because of, I don't know, Harry's red beam being more powerful than Voldemort's green beam and Nagini being killed at the same time. It made no sense. And the whole sequence where they're flying around, do you remember what Harry says before that? He says, come on, Tom, let's finish this the way we started. Right. How did they start that? Did they start off as a wisp of smoke going through the castle, hugging each other, trying to claw their eyes out? Obviously, like muggles. One on one, mano y mano. They weren't mano y mano. Harry was a baby and did nothing, and Harry's mom sacrificed himself. Here, they're just like, literally, it's like a a whole new world, except with Harry Potter and Voldemort. In fact, let's make a cut of that. Let's make that sequence and add a whole new world from Aladdin. (laughs) That makes more sense. Just, just uh, Just for joy value, I'd love to see that. Yeah, and by the way, when they're standing at the edge of a cliff, you know what Voldemort should do? Just push Harry off the castle. Since he can't seem to kill him with curses, just kill him good old muggle fashion. Boom, to the deaths, broken bones, everything gone. 
fair point i think <laughs> i don't even want to comment i think i think the the way they fought and that ending boss fight actually uh deviating from the books i think they did a pretty good job man i i loved it and just their I, ending boss fight was like a weak version of dragon ball z one person is doing kamehameha the other person is doing like a spirit bomb and then whoever has the more powerful beam whichever beam manages to go more to the other side the yeah. other person wins yeah so they time it with nagini's dad harry has a better wand voldemort's all shaken and messed up it makes sense like what's what's not to understand there they actually make it so that it's not understandable until harry explains it in the sequence on the bridge with hermione and ron right. where he explains the whole elder wand thing yeah which by the way he breaks and throws yeah What an incompoo, bro! Why? What about the next dark wizard that comes around? What? Why? Why this dumb decision? No, the whole point is that these these darkness powers, dark wizards, and all they're able to come to this much power because of the Elder Wand and and the Horcruxes and the Hallows and stuff like that. So he's just reducing all of that to the ground. Like none of that exists. It's so the opposite, man. Like in the book, they actually show Voldemort's backstory and how similar he was to Harry Potter and orphan, and he just chose the wrong path. and in the book he dies in front of everyone collapses to the ground from a reverse of ada kedavra like a mere mortal they take his body and put it aside here he dies alone harry potter just comes out triumphant people have to take his word for it for all they know he pushed voldemort off a cliff no he does he has the infinity war ashes sort of death oh yeah by the way yeah. he just gets snapped out of existence <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah i mean thanos basically takes care of voldemort yeah. let's make another video thanos snaps and yeah, voldemort that's, that's a good movie yeah <laughs> oh god this movie pissed me off so much and then like harry doesn't want the elder wand it reminded me of tom holland just not wanting the glasses like when iron man gave it to him like accept some responsibility you're 18 tom holland you want to be an order just take the elder wand and do good shit with it just like tom holland gives away the glasses The Elder Wand is bigger than Harry Potter. Is bigger than Voldemort. Is bigger than Dumbledore. He already has one uh, uh, Hallow. Yeah, he does. Why yeah. doesn't he keep the other one? Because and they cut together. They're the Deathly Hallows. And he threw away the third one into the forest. Yeah, the most powerful one. No, actually, I would say the second most powerful one. The Elder One's obviously the most powerful one. What is he doing? It doesn't <laughs> make any sense. Oh my god. I don't know, man. I think you're just bitching a lot about how this movie deviated from the books. That's the base of your argument. There, I don't get it. I find that this movie did a tremendous job overall. It's, it's emotional. It's action packed. You see beloved characters see out their arcs, and according to me, a good fashion. You see people die. It's all it's supposed to be. The visual aesthetics. I don't know why you're against them. I actually like them. The score, intensity, everything was finally, finally coming together in a way that I felt happy watching a Harry Potter movie. So thanks, David Yates. Thanks whoever was responsible for that. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe actually felt like he was a man at some points in this movie, which is very tough for me to conceive before watching this movie. He didn't even feel like he was a man in the epilogue where he was playing a forty-five-year-old man. <laughs> yeah, that was bad makeup, by the way. I, I can see through that. That was really bad makeup on all four of them. And Ginny, yeah, she looked the worst by far think, as think, an old I woman. I think I uh, think Hermione looked the worst because she literally looked her age. Yeah, she was just wearing a, a <laughs> yeah. Burberry overcoat, and then and then they just grayed out her like side of her hair. Oh, it's awful! That, it's that so bad. That epilogue was really weird. Yeah, but and, overall, and then, I love this movie, man. Oh God, I I you know what I have to say? This movie was very cathartic because I got the opportunity to do this feud hmm. and rant my heart out. Yeah. and a well deserved rant it is and my god the fact that this movie is on the imdb top 250 is blasphemy did you just say that it's a well deserved rant for yourself yeah <laughs> for okay. the movie okay. the movie deserves a rant it deserves rant with a rant now <laughs> okay then <laughs> So that wraps up this episode of film feud thank you for listening and now we feud it and you our listeners get to decide who you think won You can catch us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Muncha Movies and you can vote for us there. You can also find us on our website munchamovies.com or you can catch us on YouTube and vote over there. You can also catch highlights of this episode and other fun content. That's Muncha Movies on YouTube. Till next week. Bye-bye. Bye.